Welcome. My name is Mark Anthony Dubois Jr. And I was born July 4th, 1986. Today I got to make a different kind of video to say uh, thank you for tuning in to figure out some more about your dogs because today I want to show you something because I keep talking about stuff, but I want to show you stuff. And then I have to further explain some stuff about what I'm talking about when I'm saying the part of the do nothing. And the do nothing part is the part where you're trying to get your dog to sit. When you're trying to get your dog to down. When you're trying to get your dog to do things uh, as far as your obedience work. But as far as the just having your dog do things, this is one thing that my dog is gets, gets a chance to do every single day. And I promise you, no baby chicks will be harmed in the making of this video. It's not the point of what he does. He doesn't hurt them. He just moves them. He wants to get them all back in that corner over there. And there's a couple that are, say, broken out of the fence. And this is something that every single person, in just my opinion, my opinion, every single person on the planet needs to be able to get your dogs to be able to get activated to be able to do what his drive is meant to do. This dog in specific, a Border Collie, is moved to herd, move, gather, and get stuff in trailers, push them through fences, push them through gates. This is his job. This is what he was created to do. Us, us as humans, that are selectively breeding this dog, we came to this animal and figured out how to be able to get this animal. And a lot of us today are looking at this animal like, oh, I like how it looks, without understanding the desire of what its, its purpose is. This dog's purpose is to simplify my life out here. This is something that every single person that has a dog, they all have something like this inside of them that they just, they have to do. They have it in them. They have a dogness in them that they have to just, they have to release it. They have to let it out. And the only way you let them out is to let them do it. The more and more that you're not allowing your dog to do what it just has it in it to do, the more and more you're going to lead that dog into absolute mass levels of frustration. And the frustration is going to start to creep in because the dog isn't able to release what it has, what it needs. This is why for me personally, I have pretty much zero problems with this dog here. I have zero problems with, with behavior issues, with anything like that, because every single day, he gets a chance to be able to be what it is that he's all about. He gets to chase, he gets to stalk. It's not so much as chase with this dog. He really likes to stalk. I just have him stand here and stare at baby chicks, stare at grown chicks, and he moves around a little bit. But this right here just, just gets him completely satisfied. He looks at me like I am just the world's greatest, world's most amazing, most bestest human being possible on this planet because he gets to do what it is that he has inside of him to do. And each of our dogs has this. So for instance, my German Shepherd, he has the desire in him to just sniff, sniff. Oh my goodness, this dog can sniff up the snail, sniff the world through, he can sniff. So every single day, he gets to sniff and sniff and sniff for hours on end on just going for walks and just sniffing and going and sniffing and going and sniffing and going. He just continues to keep on doing that. So it gives him a chance to be able to calm down. And that's why for him, he has no issues with, I'm going to say, behavior issues. He just listens. We're in tune. I don't need to do extra obedience, anything. I don't do anything with them. We just go for walks and he goes and sniffs. And the thing about my Dalmatian, I just allow her to just walk and walk and walk and walk and walk and walk. I don't know what it is about this dog, but she just gets to walking. She just likes walking. She like zones out and just gets to walking. And every single day, I just keep, continue to keep on walking her. And she's going to continue to keep on just looking at me like, oh, okay, things are cool. Things are good to go. And something that I can say about even my great Pyrenees, he loves to just sit and just hang out and just protect and guard some animals. He likes to just watch over stuff. He likes to just hang out. He likes to just relax. He likes to just, just be in tune with nature and making sure that nature is good to go as far as the predators on the outside that are trying to come in and take his stuff. And his stuff is delegated from what I'm telling him that he should be paying attention to. Not what he, him own self, is thinking that he needs to guard and protect, but what it is that I've shown him to guard and protect. Because that can get down to a sticky situation with some of y'all with <clears throat> having a great Pyrenees or an Atolian Shepherd or any of these, these uh, uh, livestock, livestock guardian breeds that they can start wanting to protect and guard you. And when they start to protect and guard you, now we're running into a situation that we need to make sure that that animal knows that the outside threats are of a human being or even another dog is nothing to worry about. As far as a raccoon or a squirrel or a skunk, you know, maybe that's that's going to be in there. But we have to, that's where part, you're going to be on the massive level of socializing that animal to make sure that's going to be good to go. Because it has a desire in it to do the guarding, to do the protective, to do the, the, the just, to, to, what it's bred to do is being a guardian. It has it in it and you cannot just skip on it. You cannot just say, you know, I got this dog because of how it looks and I don't give a crap what, it, what, it's, what, it's, what it's done and what it's supposed to do. That's what I believe personally, what majority of people are just struggling with today. 
that we have these dogs. We have German Shepherds. We have Belgian Malinois. We have Dutch Shepherds. Oh, my goodness, got a Dutch Shepherd. You got uh, uh, German Shepherds. You got Border Collies. You got Australian Shepherds. You got all these dogs that have, in reality, every single dog I listed there, an extreme amount of energy to do, uh, to do some work. It has extreme drives that it needs to be, be able to utilize each day. And this is where we start to get in danger, where I start to say, don't do, stop doing too much, stop doing treats, stop doing toys. Because we're using stuff like this, we're, we're activating this drive right here to convince him to sit. And that's where things get sketchy, because that's where the dog isn't able to actually do what it's doing. That's where you're mixing the work and the play. Just allow the dog to express his drive to get it out without putting some expectations on, oh, the dog is gonna do a four and sit now all of a sudden. So here I could tell him down, uh, Oreo down, He'll understand that because that's part of his drive. That's part of his work. This is part of what he does. So he looks at me like, oh, I can't right now because, you know, he's about to move. And that's where for me, <laughs> I love this dog, uh, because that, that, what do you call it, intelligent disobedience. He understands what he needs to do. So for me, in this specific animal, he knows what I'm looking for. And he knows he wants, I want all these baby chicks back inside of here. He's going to figure it out at some point. He'll probably end up just jumping over this little fence. But uh, he, he knows what, what, I'm, what I'm looking for without it having to be nothing like hostile or nothing weird. So if I start to say sit to him, which is foreign, down is natural command for him to do right here. He's, it, it's natural to calm the animals, to make sure that he's not putting too much pressure, to, to just relax them down. But if I'm saying sit, if I'm saying center, if I'm saying wave, if I'm saying uh, uh, handshake, if I'm doing all these things while he's activated in this drive right here that he's in, this is where things get very, very confusing. Because now the animal is looking at you like, what, 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 what is going on here? What is happening? And that's where the confusion starts to happen. And when a dog goes into confusion, oh my goodness, that's, that's when we start to get put into danger in reality. That confusion in dogs is what causes, what I'm going to say is the disobedience that we see in the dogs. The disrespect that we see in the dogs. Because we are disrespecting the dog. We are doing stuff. So like right here, this is a part where you get your dogs to get in the drive. You, you're, doing, you're doing the work with them. And I'm not, you do not pet them. You do not really praise them. You, you, you just let them do what they have to do. And the more that you just let them do what they have to do, the better and the more focused and the more dedicated they're going to be in that work that they're doing. And the more that's how they're going to be able to get out their, the, all I can say is the dogness of the dog. The dog has something inside of it that it needs. It absolutely needs to let go of. And, and if you're sitting there trying to do extra and you're touching it and doing this, you're, you're, you're interrupting the natural flow of the dog's work and the dog's pattern and who the dog is and what the dog represents. And when you start keep doing that more and more and more, that's when you start seeing that dog just looking at you like, get, get off of me, get away from me. And the dog just wants to get further and further and further away from you. And it's just getting pushier and pushier and pushier. Now something that, again, this is, this is, and, I'm gonna, and someone could say, oh, oh, Mark, you got the luxury, you got a farm, you got, no, I got the farm and then I got the dog. I didn't get the dog and decide, oh, I need to figure out how to be able to work my dog. Not, no, I got the need. I had a need out here. I had a need that I needed goats somewhere, so I got the dog specific for that need. And this is where the majority of people today, unfortunately, we're messing up because we're doing that backwards. We're getting the dog, and then we're not having no purpose, no need for the dog. And then we're like, my dog's going crazy. What do I do? And then you go into, oh, my dog needs better obedience. And then you're, you're working on this obedience and the entire time you're just, you're button heads, button heads, button heads. And then you run into that scenario that now it's like, well, where do I go now? What do I do now? And this is the thing that we should be focusing on day one. Because again, I don't teach this dog obedience tricks and commands and yet he is an amazing dog. This is the type of dog that anybody on the planet could only just wish and dream and desire that they could have. When he's just walking, we're just relaxing, we're just hanging out, we're just doing what we're doing. This dog is a joy to be around. He's so agreeable, and that's why Border Collies are awesome. And he's just, he's so in tune, but he gets the chance to be able to just let it all out. This little, little thing that he's just sitting here, it looks like he's not really doing nothing, but he's doing so much right now. He's doing like the mental capacity that he's doing right now to be able to just, just focus on staring at those chickens. And then here, we'll really upgrade him to activate him. Come on, let's go out. Come on, we'll get him out here. And we really upgrade him here in a second and activate him to like now he can really start to get <laughs> you go push him back inside. He can really start to just really get moving around on him. And he's just this dog right here will do anything, anything in the world for me because I give him a chance to be able to just do what he's supposed to do. And this here is is just his his favorite thing on the absolute planet to do. 
this dude can sit here and do this literally 24 seven. But then if I let him do it too much, then he starts to get too tired. And when he gets too tired, then he starts to just uh, want to sleep all day. But in reality, <laughs> that's what most people want. I'm not looking for a dog to be asleep all day. I need a dog that when I any time needed, I need, I need stuff to be able to be done. But this is something that is just straight up required that we all need to figure out with our dogs, with each individual of our dogs. And with each of my dogs, I'm gonna have to just start making videos of each of my dogs of something that I've been able to use to be able to get all of my dogs to be able to relax, to be able to calm down. And today is gonna to be the first one of this little thing that I gotta do, a show on a border collie, moving some baby chicks. There's four baby chicks here he's been playing with. Four baby chicks. It doesn't take a thousand, it doesn't take a whole bunch. Four baby chicks is gonna be able to get this dog to be satisfied. And these chicks are gonna take six months, five months to be able to get full grown. These four baby chicks will be able to satisfy this dog for the next four months, five months. And then when they get older, even still, he can still keep working them, keep moving them. And especially if he has his own little flock like this, he's going to, the, the chicks are gonna to start to know him. This is how my cows are. My cows know where to go, what to do, because they understand the relationship with the dog. So the, he comes out, he's able to move them, move them around. That's why you see the videos of the border collies moving the little ducks and getting in the water and doing this stuff because they've had a relationship with them. The chicks know that he's not trying to kill them. He's not trying to hurt them. He's just trying to move them. He may put his mouth on them, but it's not to the point where he's trying to like, he's, he's just trying to end its life. He's just, hey, let's move, man, let's move. And the chicks will start to understand that. <laughs> this rooster here, he's, he's gonna come get in the mix of it. But uh, uh, they'll start to understand what, what it is that's going on here and they'll start to balance and work with each other. That's all that these border collies that I've seen do. The reason that they start going in and start killing stuff is because they, they have an excessive amount of energy. They have extreme, that's why they'll start nipping your heels and start nipping your kids and moving people around because they have all of this energy that they have yet to ever be able to use. They, they just weren't able to use it. So they have to let it out at some point. And that, that letting out is usually a, a, a dangerous thing. But when you just keep allowing him to be able to have a little bit every single day, a little bit every single day, they just, they just relax, they calm down, they chill. And this is something here that, you know, <laughs> I don't want to say this, but I don't know your neighborhood, but uh, I know y'all got HOAs and stuff in some of y'all places, but four baby chicks, I'm, man, you can put these guys in your garage during the day, you can raise them up and you can put them in the backyard, let your dog move them around, ain't nobody going to know, but you got to do something to satisfy your dog's needs or your dog is just going to continue to keep getting worse and worse and worse. This is something that I've seen with mine that I'm just like, what the heck is it with my dogs that I just do not have behavior issues? And they get to do what they do every day. And maybe not every day, but most every most every single day that they're doing something. But but in reality, this dog here, he help, he's out with me when I feed them. He's out with me when I change the waters. He's out with me when I do that. So every day he get at least 30, 40, 50 minutes every single day of just looking at baby chicks and moving them around. And this just satisfies him. And and it's it is it is again, I'm going to say straight up mandatory. It's not so much as the obedience that everyone is trying to tell you that, oh, if you do the sit, you do the down, you do the heel, you do the loose leash walking, that's going to give you a nice dog. And it is not. It is not. It's giving your dog a purpose, so giving your dog a desire that it, its desires met, that's what's going to give you the, the most premium, I'm telling you, the most premium nice dog that you're ever going to see. When I keep working my Dalmatian, I haven't taken her for a walk for three days, and today was that third day that I took her out, and you could see it in her where that frustration started coming out. She's like, I'm pulling like a freight train back on this harness again. She's just going wild because she, she, she wasn't getting her needs met. But when I meet her needs, she's just the most, she's so adorable. She's just the sweetest sweetheart because she just, she, she like just, just hangs out, man. She's not as pushy. She's not as just, just mean looking. She's just relaxed. And it's the same with this dog. This dog gets to do this every day. And I have never, ever seen this dude look wild and crazy. This dude sits in the van. He sees people. I mean, people even pet him in the van. He don't care. He's so chill. He sees other dogs. He's like, oh, dog, cool, chill. He's so relaxed because he, he doesn't have to like, he's been able to release that energy. So he doesn't need to focus on another dog and try to move and herd that other dog because that's where, oh man, things get dangerous with a lot of these herding breed dogs because they want to start herding other dogs and not all dogs want to be moved around like that because they're not moving them in a healthy manner, especially if they only get to do it here and there. It, it, they're moving them in a very, very toxic way. And the other dogs are gonna give them pushback like, oh, heck no, nah, man, you are not about to be doing that to me. You are not about to be all on top of me like that. 
and, and that's what creates hostility. And then your dog's got to have a little bit more hostility because it's it's getting to the point where it's 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 like it has to get what it needs done. And then that's where the, the, the silly dog fights start happening. That's where your dog starts to bark and bark and bark and look wild and crazy when it's it's uh, uh, on leash, when it sees other dogs, because it's it's not able to get done what it needs to get done. And this is something that, again, if you already have a dog like this and you're just like, nothing's working and I don't know where to go, this is, this is something that you're going to have to figure out how to be able to do. And again, these four little baby chicks, granted, I don't know how many are even in here at this point. There's quite a bit. <laughs> they already know where to go when we come in here. They get in the corner to hang out. But uh, these four little baby chicks is more than enough to be able to satisfy this dog's drive, to give him everything that he needs. You see him just sitting there. He's sitting there. That's that mental game right here it, it, by extreme. He's sitting here. He knows he could break through this little flimsy little thing. He can get through it, but he's not. He's he's using so much self-control right now. And this is what just just absolutely gets dogs to be a very very premium animal on this planet and this is something that you 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 got to figure it out if you're really having issues this is something that that is again it 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 may seem simple for me but again i bought the dog for a need not just having a dog because of how it looked and that's where uh, the unfortunate thing is we're messing up today and we're going to continue to keep all messing up with that because we just we like how it looks and we like this and we like that but i have never seen a border collie as, as chill is calm is nice is what mine is because they they are none of them that i've ever seen are actually doing any of the work that they're, they're supposed to be doing and this is something that 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 if you're having issues i'm telling you obedience and doing more commands it's not going to fix it and and i know that a lot of people y'all running into that scenario that it's not fixing it it's not helping it it's not doing anything for you and and that's why you're you're like where do i go now and no one's talking not no one but there's not enough people talking about the getting the drive met of the dog, getting the needs met of the dog, being in partnership and working with the dog to be able to get the dog to do what the dog needs to do. This is something that me and him do together. He doesn't come out here and just do this on his own. This is this is what we do. And, and he knows this is the game that we play. And he's 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 not allowed to just go off and run away and do whatever he wants when he wants. This is this is us time. And that's what makes it even more valuable because he knows that I'm the one that's given him the access to be able to do this. And that's where the respect comes from. The trust started from us just hanging out and him seeing, I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to mess you. I'm going to be cool to you. I'm not going to push you too hard. And then now the respect is there to like almost fully with this specific dog because we do this together and we do it over and over and over again. And he gets to continuously keep on seeing it happen over again. Come on, man. Let's try to get him back in. Come on. We continue to keep on doing this, and he's just going to continue to keep getting better and better and better. And he just, he's like, man, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be able to do this. Like, thank you for, for being able to, to do this with me. Thank you for being able to bring this to me. Thank you for being able to, to just give me this, this outlet to be able to get all of this frustration that I have out. Because that's what he's, this is what he's here to do. You can see they're right there. He's, he's just, he's, you're going to look at him. But he's not here to, to hurt them. He's not here to kill them. He's not here to damage them. He's not here to do anything to them, but just move them back inside. That's all he's here to do. Yeah, but this is the this is this is huge. So we've been here about 15 minutes, and this boy is all his, we're good today. We're done. This is all he needs to do right here. This is it. 15 minutes is, is all that it takes for a whole 24 hours. And sometimes this can last for two or three days, no problem. And just this one little session that I allow him to do like this. And this is something that that is just it's 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 powerful. Did you see this little baby chick even half of taking a nap because she she knows she's comfortable in the presence of this dog, especially because they know this guy, he's going to get the other predators out if there is something out here. But he's 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 so in tune. Like, look at him. Just he's sitting there so concentrated. He's sitting there so just like he's in it, man. He's so zoned in. He's so still. He's doing what he's supposed to be doing. Look, at you. <laughs> he gonna bump it. Hey, man, get back inside. That's what he's saying. And he just bumped him like, get in there, man. Get in there. I'm telling you what to do right now. Get in there. And he's going to just just sit here and sit on him. And his his this this impulse control right here is just what's wild. Now he moved him back in. Now he's like, OK, let's get him inside. He's like, I, I nudged you, but you didn't do anything. So now he put his teeth on him a little bit and put him inside. But he's not here to hurt them. He's just here to get them in reality back to safety. He's like, y'all are on the outside of the fence. He's supposed to be on the inside of the fence over here. So he's trying to get them back to safety. And this is just, this is just, I don't know to me, when I just sit and watch this dog, this is incredible to me. 
This is just the coolest of the coolest that I could just sit here and, and watch to see what the dog does and see how we see how he's able to work. And then I'm able to just work in tune with him and we start to understand each other. And this is where, this is relationship building people. This is how you're able to get a dog to be able to really, really, really respond to what you're saying. You get the dog to trust you first by just allowing it to know that you're not here to hurt the dog, but giving that dog that respect is giving that dog that thing that it does that it absolutely enjoys doing. And this right here is, is why when people see me with this specific dog, they're like, how do I get my dog to look at me like that? How do I get my dog to respond to me like that? And this is all that I do. I do zero, zero and I've done zero obedience work with this dog. He only understood sit when he would watch uh, me uh, do it with one uh, my shepherd. And he would watch me from the main field and he started sitting all of a sudden one day. It was just, it was weird. It was really foreign, but I've never seen this dog in a sit position ever before. I never teach this dog a recall. I never taught him anything. I didn't even really teach down. When I see he naturally went down like that, I would just say, oh, good boy, good down. And he got it one day. I never taught any of that stuff, but yet he does everything that everybody is looking for out of a dog. I could take this dog anywhere. I could do anything. And even no, he, he's my farm dog. He's still comfortable going places. He's still comfortable being everywhere because he looks at me as that leader to be able to get him to be able to be to, to take him anywhere. He knows that I'm good to go. And then at the same time, this dog is so confident and so tuned with me that he's like, if man, if I'm in danger, he's willing to step up and make sure that we're all good to go in the end. And this is just this is this is how you start to build your dog to respect you, because the dog is able to look at me and say, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to do this. We, we head out of here and we go back to the house. He's just going to lay there, look at me. He's going to say, okay, cool, man. What, what are we going to do next? With, with no pushiness, with no, no hostile, no nothing. Just we hanging out. We, we just, we relaxing. We, we doing what we doing. And nothing needs to come to it being a disagreement or a battle. Because, because he's just, he, he, he good to go. Oreo, you good? This is such a good dog. And, and mainly not because of anything that I've done extra just allowing him to do what it is that he has it in him that he wants to do. That's what makes this a really, really nice dog. I didn't, I don't, I, I can't take the credit for anything other than just putting him in the field, putting him in this brooder, putting him in the coops and just having him work these animals. That's all that I've done with this dog. And he looks just absolutely amazing. I would hope that this can get some people a little inspired to just want to get up and do something with your dog, to find something with your dog. And go to, if it means you got to go to the tractor supply right now because baby chicks are in season right now. Get you a little flock of baby chicks, put them inside of a little, uh, uh, what do you call that? Like a little metal container. Because if your dog hasn't done this before, he's going to try to, he's going he gonna to go wild. <laughs> so get them, keep the baby chicks safe and just have them there so your dog can just circle around them. So your dog can just see them, especially, I don't know what it is, but he loves circling the coop. He can just circle the coop, circle the coop. He lays down here and there. He circles the coop, circles the coop. And then if he tries to put teeth on the, on the wire, I get on about that. I say, ah, ah, ah. And he's like, oh, okay, okay, you're good. You're good. And, and he stops that and he stops messing with it and, and just be able to get that drive out of your dog. And I'm telling you, you do that for even that first time, but three or four times, you're going to see that your dog is, is going to start to transform for you. It's just, it's going to change into something that is just absolutely just, just wild. And you're going to be shocked and surprised with seeing what it is that your dog is going to be able to turn into all for just allowing it to do what it wants to do inside. And what it wants to do inside is each dog is different. But here, this is Border Collie, what it wants to do inside, move animals, herd animals, uh, get animals in the corner, get animals in a trailer, get them, get them moving, get them moving and get them moving. Everything he's doing right now is to get them moving. So he's trying to use his stare to get them moving. But the baby chicks are so young that they don't quite understand it. So he stares at them. The baby chicks are standing there like, oh, well, whatever. <laughs> but when they get older, they'll start to understand. But they, they do have that little fence right there that we can let them jump over and, and, and be able to push them back inside. Uh, let's see if we can get them to do that. Uh, Oreo, come here. Jump, jump, jump. And then he'll go over here and work them. And we'll lift the gate up a little bit to let them push them inside. And he'll get them in there. And he's just staring at them. Now the chicks are moving. They're like, oh my goodness, what are we going to do? He'll just keep staring at them. All right, come on. Oreo. Jump, jump, jump. <laughs> so now that he's got them all back, now he's going to make sure that everyone's back in the corner. 
Now he's going to tighten them up in this corner. He's just going to keep them all in here. He gets the loose ones out, and then he's like, okay, everybody get back. Everybody get back. So now they're trying to run away right here, so he's going to get them all back into that corner. He's make sure that everyone stays in there. And at the end of the day, this is to make sure that everyone is safe. Let's try to keep everybody safe out here. I don't need nothing straggling, getting left behind, a coyote come and get it, or a raccoon come and get it. I need you guys to get in here. This is just what these dogs do. This is just what, what is so impressive about these dogs. Everybody's always showing them. Uh, Oreo, is there a rat in there? We, we don't have a mouse in here. <laughs> he, he on a different mission now. I can see a difference in his behavior. He, that's one thing he's good at as well is uh, rat hunting, man. This dude will find a mouse and he'll get it. <laughs> it's impressive what this dog is capable of doing. He's on a different mission right now. I can see him. But uh, uh, he's making sure that everyone is, everything is safe out here. I see all the videos of the Border Collies and the stuff, moving the cows and moving the, the sheep and moving the goats and stuff, but they can move baby chicks. They can move full-grown chicks. They're capable of doing this. They're not said like aggressive to do it. They know what they're doing. The only reason they look said aggressive is because the big bull isn't moving, so he got to put teeth on it. But if it just moves, everything is fine. Because you see how these chicks even, they're, they're comfortable wanting to <laughs> sit here and eat. They're like, they know they're not in danger. He's just moving them, keeping them here. And that's what, in reality, calm, that's, Man, these border collies are phenomenal because this is their job back in the days before. Uh, before we had fences, we had electric fences. Before we had all this stuff, these guys would keep the animals contained so they would stay close to home. And that's what a Dutch Shepherd is the most premium dog on the planet to be able to do, to keep animals contained. No need for no fences. And, and, and they're able to do this almost pretty much 24-7. And it calms the animals down. These dogs have a purpose, and the purpose is to calm all the animals down. And, and they're absolutely amazing. This is something that I hope that anyone out here is struggling with the border collie specific, any kind of herding breed, that you, you would do what you got to to get your, get your dog to be able to express its drives. And, and when, you, when it's able to do that, just let it do it. Don't think, oh, sit, oh, down, oh, this, oh, don't do any of that. Just work the dog, allow it to do, in reality, these dogs know what the heck they're doing. Allow them to do what they do. And you're going to watch that your dog is going to start to get better. Thank you. And this here is Oreo.